Hi guys, today we are hand pollinating zinnias and I thought I would take you along and show you how I do it. Zinnias are self-fertile and they actually have two different types of seed. One of them being from the disc florets. Those are those little yellow flowers that you see all around the disc. They have their own stigmas in the center that produce seed and then the other being from the ray florets and those are the pink, what we know as pink petals, but they're actually rays, and they have little Y-shaped stigmas at the end where they connect to the disc. So zinnias are self-fertile in the sense that they are a network of flowers. They have a bunch of florets on one stem, and this is just one of the little disc florets. So one of these could cross-pollinate with another disc floret on the same plant, and it could also cross-pollinate with the stigmas on the ray florets as well. This is good to know because if you're hand pollinating, you may want to um, just pollinate one flower so you can isolate a certain color. So essentially, you're only pollinating all the stigmas on one zinnia stem. Here's a closer look at what the ray stigmas look like. They look like little Y-shaped stigmas, kind of neat, and you can actually see some pollen on there. So to hand pollinate my zinnias, I just pick a small paintbrush and I'm just gently rubbing them all over these little florets, um, really trying to focus on the stigma that's in the center of the floret. And then you can rub these um, underneath the petals to get all of those little Y-shaped stigmas at the end of the rays. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if they're brown, they're no longer fertile, so you wanna make sure that they're still yellow. And then also on the edge of these little florets, that you see me touching, there's also um, some ray stigmas there. Now in order to keep your pollinators from cross-pollinating with colors that you don't want, you can cover each flower head with like a netted um, grocery bag or a produce bag to keep pollinators out. The only thing is, is it probably isn't gonna keep ants and things like that out, which also pollinate for you. Um, but I've had very good luck isolating colors this way. And again, I just put that netted bag or um, produce bag over the flower and then every day or every few days I'll come out and I'll pollinate that same flower again because it does um, open up in stages. So you'll you get new stigmas all the time or new florets all the time, more petals, more florets in the, that center disc. So you want to make sure you come back and you hand pollinate as much as possible so you can get the most seed. Then you're just gonna let this flower completely dry on the stem before you cut it off. And when you go to cut it off, don't forget to harvest the seeds that are at the end of the rays and also the seeds that are stuck inside of that disc because they're kind of hidden in there. And a lot of people just end up pulling the petals or pulling the rays out and saving the seeds at the ends. But there's actually a slimmer seed in each one of those um, each one of those florets that were on the disc. So that whole disc is gonna be jam-packed with seeds so you know if you only pick one over the other you're essentially losing half of your seeds so you want to make sure you save both seeds this patch of zinnias is my breeding project this year these are all the colors that i'm trying to breed and um what i do at the end of the season is i pick all of my favorite colors and i make sure to tag them and i will do a really extensive um, zinnia breeding video because there's a lot of really good tips I have for you guys to keep track of your colors and how to seed save them and store them and all that good stuff so we'll go over that in another video um, but what I do is I tag all of the all the colors that I like and then I make sure to save seeds from those flowers and I catalog everything um, but the colors I'm really focusing on this year are the baby pinks, mauves, peachy colors, anything that's pastel. But I'm also working on a special project called Hal's Yellow, which is a really, really pale yellow zinnia with a darker yellow center. And then I'm also working on a creamy white zinnia with a red, pinkish red center. Um, and I don't mean center as in the inside of the rays. I mean the disc is actually red instead of yellow like you see here on these white ones. So there's all kinds of colors that you can get um, or color combinations you can get from your zinnias. The disc could be all sorts of colors, pink, purple, red, white, yellow, orange. So you can breed for that color and then you also could breed for the ray colors. So you can see this one is like a really creamy peachy color with a red center. These white ones have a green center. There's all kinds of color combinations you could do. Um, but I'll go over that in my breeding video. Like I said, it's gonna be a really detailed video 
um, showing you how to breed your zinnias, how to pick out good quality zinnias to seed save from, and all of that good stuff. I hope this video has inspired you to try a zinnia breeding patch because there's so many amazing colors that you could breed with zinnias. It, the possibilities are really endless. And if you do try out breeding some zinnias, let me know how it goes in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And stay tuned again for that breeding video. It's going to be a good one. And I promise I'll answer all the questions that you might have um, as far as breeding zinnias go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.